You see, you can't have love without forgiveness. The second one is this, acceptance. Acceptance. Forgiving and then accepting. Yes. Don't misunderstand me. The scripture is full. We don't just accept everybody. There are some people in the church who are not right with Christ. And God tells us to have no communion with them. Because they are wicked and evil. Now each one to their own place. You have a friend, you have a loved one, whatever your relationship is, is going to determine a lot upon your acceptance. But we are not to accept everybody just because God has forgiven them or we have forgiven them. We are not tolerant of everything in the world. Say amen. God is not tolerant. But given your individual circumstance and your relationship with the one to whom God is asking you to forgive, even like he forgave you, there may be a need for a certain degree of the chemistry of acceptance to make that forgiveness complete. And the third ingredient, chemistry of love, is giving. You shall know them by their fruits. For God so loved the world that he gave. You cannot say, I have the love of God and I love God and not be a giver. You cannot do that. John says in his book, if you do that, you are a liar. You cannot say, I love God and not be a giver. And not somehow make a contribution. Somehow not bring an offering. You cannot do it. You cannot do it. The chemistry of love are these three things. Forgiveness, acceptance, and giving. And if you take any one of those three ingredients out, you don't have love. What is Paul saying right here? Paul now is saying that ye be, listen, let's read it again. That ye be rooted and grounded in love. Let me tell you something. A mature, stable person is one who understands what it means to forgive. A mature, stable person is one who understands what it means what it means when it's time to make acceptance. And number three, a strong, stable Christian person in God knows what it means to be a giver. And that person is rooted and grounded in the love of God. Say amen. That person is rooted and grounded in the love. Let's continue on. Now let's look at Paul. Now he really begins to crank it up and get excited. Oh, Paul gets excited now. So he's talking about love. He's talking about the inner man. And now we just can't help but expound on it even a little bit more. In verse 18, and say, May be able, if you're rooted and grounded now in love, that you may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth, what is the length, what is the depth, and what is the height, and to know the love of Christ which passeth knowledge, that ye might be filled with all the fullness of God. Paul is excited about this. Now let me hear. Listen closely now as I make this assertion. To comprehend, Paul says in verse 18, that ye may be able to comprehend with all saints. You see, Paul had these great revelations. And now he's trying to write it in pen as the gospel of Christ. And he's trying to tell the church, oh church, let me encourage you in some way, in some manner. You've got to be able to comprehend a little bit the height, the depth, the length, the breadth of God's greatness and how much he wants to fill us with fullness of himself. Listen now. To comprehend, hear this, to comprehend this greatness can only be determined by a person's hunger for God. You can only comprehend. Listen to me now. Verse 18. May be able to comprehend with all saints what's the breadth, the length, the depth, and the height. Oh, it's easy. Familiar scripture. Oh, yeah. God is great. He is big and wide and deep. And woo! Woo! God is great. Woo! God is great. But there's going to come a time 
where that woo is going to be turned into a broken weeping. A broken weeping. Because we don't understand what he's talking about. And what Paul here is saying, to comprehend this greatness of God can only come through a person's degree of hunger for the things of God. Hallelujah. Hunger can only be comprehended by the hunger. By the hunger. As the deer panteth for the water, so my soul longeth after thee. Oh, I'm so hungry for you, O oh God. Hungry for you, O oh God. Listen, we can't understand what the Bible's talking about. Unless we hunger, unless we read a verse of scripture, and then we say, oh God, teach me. What does that mean? What are you saying? How does that apply in my own soul? God, show me. Enlighten my eyes. I'm hungry for the things of God. Say amen. amen. Hallelujah. A person who is hungry for the things of God has a constant burning revival down deep in their inner soul. Listen to me now. I told my wife the other day, and it's been coming on for the last, oh, I don't know, month, two months. I told my wife, I said, honey, I sense a revival of my faith in my own soul. I sense a revival of my own faith. To believe God, to believe God, to believe God for the great and mighty things that he is saying in his word. A couple Wednesday nights ago we talked about, two Sundays ago I preached on it's time now to possess the promised land. And I think, listen to me now, Christian people. There's a promised land out there somewhere for you. It's either in a relationship or, or a place or, or, or a love somehow. Somewhere, someplace. There is a promised land, a dwelling of your soul. Yes. Maybe it's not out there. Maybe your promised land is down deep in the inner man. Maybe that's the promised land that God wants to lead you to that promised land of your inner man and there commune together. You and him commune together. Let me tell you something. When that takes place, God happens. God happens. And we want a God happening, say amen. We want a happening of God. We want God to happen around our altars. We want God to happen in our souls. We want God to happen in our churches. We want God to happen in our schools. In our country, and most of all, I want God to happen in me. Wow. Hallelujah. I want God to happen inside me. Praise Jesus. Verse 19, and to know the love of Christ, which passeth knowledge, that ye might be filled with all the fullness of God. Well, it sounds really good, doesn't it? Sounds great, but it can never happen unless we're hungry for it. Wow. It can never happen unless we thirst for it. Hallelujah. Verse 20. Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. Oh, that's a familiar promise. Oh, yeah. God can do anything. Nothing's impossible for God. God can do anything. All you got to do is just believe. Okay? Show it in your own life. Show it in your own soul. Show it in what you say, what we do. Show it. Show it, manifest it in a person's life. Now that he is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all things that we ask or think according to the power that works within us. Okay, God, for that to take place, I need a revival of my faith in my own soul. Oh, I'm hungry for you. I'm hungry for the things of God. I'm hungry for the presence of God. I'm hungry for the Spirit of God. There's a promised land. Oh, God, lead me to the promised land. God, I'll follow you wherever you go. Whatever you say, whatever you want us to do. 
God will say and will do it, will go and will become it. Uh, Lord, just fill our souls. Uh, fill our inner man, oh God, with your presence. As a deer panteth after the water. Oh my soul, it panteth, oh God, after thee. My inner man, it panteth, oh God, after thee. Do your great and exceeding things. I'll believe it. I want to experience it. Can you say amen? And then verse 21. Now unto him. Paul's so excited. Now unto him be glory to the church. In the church by Jesus Christ throughout all ages. World without end. Amen. I'm done. If you got it, you'll be blessed. If you didn't got it, you ain't going to be blessed. I'm done. Amen. Let's go have lunch. I think that's exactly what Paul did. <laughs> Otherwise, he wouldn't have said amen. Amen means I accept it. It's done. So be it. Done. I got no more to say. Church of Ephesians, this is it. This is it. You either got it, you're either hungry for it, and you're going to get it, or it's going to pass you by. Now that choice is completely up to you. Can you say amen this morning, folks? Hallelujah. I firmly believe that the year 2020, I close with this example. For everyone in this congregation this morning, those of you listening to me by the internet, for all of you, New Year's resolution bah humbuggers. And you're, you know who you are because you're a humbugger. A 14-year-old girl, 14-year-old 8th grade, beautiful, beautiful, precious, as beautiful as the stars, said to me, my New Year's resolution for 2020 is that my faith will grow. Now for all of you old bah humbuggers, don't you feel ashamed. Now unto him who is able to do bigger and better and greater than you could ever think, I suggest you make a New Year's resolution and get in line behind the eighth grader and God will bless your life. Heavenly Father, we just love you this morning. Oh God, we just love you this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, I'm so hungry for you, oh God. I'm just so hungry. For things are Your scripture, Lord, says an increasing or an enlarging. I pray, Lord, this coming year, 2020, that for each one who hears this message this morning, that 2020 will bring an incredible increasing and an enlarging of the things of God to each one personally. In the name of Jesus. 
And that hunger will depend. Hunger will depend upon the size of that enlargement. Hunger will depend upon the size of that increase. I pray, God, as we leave this place this morning, oh, that we hunger like we've never hungered before. That we hunger this coming week. God, that we cry out to you. Even as a deer panteth for the water. Oh, this week, Lord, may our souls pant for you. Hallelujah. Bless this congregation. Bless them all in spirit and in health. Bless them all in relationships. Bless them all in finances. And we give you all glory and all praise and dominion. In Jesus' precious name. And everyone say amen. That's awesome.